The GTX Titan X, the king of Nvidia graphics cards, wasn't really the king. Maybe in terms of price, but when it came to performance, the aftermarket coolers of the GTX 980 Ti, of which the Titan X was never allowed to obtain, allowed for spectacular overclocking potential. So much so that even though the Ti was short a few hundred active CUDA cores, it actually yielded higher frame rates than almost every game tested, regardless of the resolution. So up until the dawn of the GTX 1080, the 980 Ti was the best Nvidia had to offer, and for a price tag of around 600 US dollars. Today, however, there are new kids on the block. The 1080 blows away the current competition, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, but the 1070, retailing in the mid-400s currently, still offers quite the punch. But is it enough of a punch to knock out Nvidia's own 2015 title holder? As I've demonstrated in a video which you can check out currently in the card above me, the 980 Ti has dropped significantly in price over the past few weeks. In fact, you can pick one up for as cheap or cheaper than the 1070 in a few instances. So with that said, let's answer the question. Can the savvy GTX 1070 outperform the mighty 980 Ti? The 1070 is an overclocking beast. Thanks to my buddy Drew, who was gracious enough to bring his EVGA Founders Edition 1070 all the way from the beach here to the studio, we'll be able to card swap and answer this question straight up. With his 1070 overclocked to 1900MHz at the core and 4000MHz in the memory, check out the intro video by the way if you haven't already in the card right here, I haven't a shadow of a doubt that this card is indicative of some of the best 1070 performers out there. Even some of the 1070s with the beefiest aftermarket coolers aren't overclocked out of the box to these frequencies. It's all thanks to Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0 and to ensure that our 1070 remained at these frequencies, we manually set them in MSI Afterburner in consistently monitored temperatures. On the 980 Ti side, we're using an MSI Gold Edition cooler, a core clock of 1530 MHz, and a memory clock of 3500 MHz. Everything else on our test bench will remain the same. We've got an Intel Core i7-6700K overclocked to 4.6 GHz, 16GB of Gil Superloose DDR4 clocked to 3000 MHz, and a fancy 1TB Western Digital Black hard disk drive for the games we'll be testing. The operating system is loaded on an SSD. I should also note that hard drives do not affect in-game performance, it is the frame rates that you see when you're actually playing the game. They will affect load times, however, so if you're swapping between maps or loading a game from the start, uh, having those games stored on a solid state drive will drastically reduce those load times, but the frame rates will be equivalent. So with that, Let's have at it. Let's start off with Heaven Benchmark. This benchmarking tool stresses only the graphics card, and in this case, the two cards are pretty much neck and neck. The 980 Ti edges out a very, very minor win, but this is within our margin of error. Across the board, our minimums, maximums, and averages were essentially in a deadlock. In case number two with City Skylines, a rather CPU intensive game, we found the 1070 pulling ahead by quite a margin. While this may not seem apparent from the averages, our minimums and maximums were noticeably and even visibly higher during gameplay. This is more evident in our frame rate trend line. Across the board, whether we were zoomed out or zoomed way in, the Pasco architecture was winning through and through. The 980 Ti wasn't far behind, but when it comes to zooming in close and forcing high detail textures to show up, the faster clock speeds and more efficient architecture edge out a clear win for the 1070. However, when it came to GTA 5, things became, well, vague. The average frame rate differential between both cards was within the margin of error, and the mins and maxes didn't clear things up. We even frame scaled to twice the resolution of 1080p, and the cards were still neck and neck. And while the GTX 1070 does boast an additional 2GB of VRAM, pushing the load anywhere above 6GB resulted in undesirable frame rates, meaning that the 980 Ti could still play ball. When it comes to Grand Theft Auto, both cards win. The tides turned in the ashes of the singularity. The 980 Ti is the clear winner in this round, boasting an average 9% FPS increase over the 1070. The case was the same for Total War Warhammer, a game only released one month ago. The average frame rate difference was 4.5, and, and our mins were 2 frames higher as well for the Ti. If you're wondering how we benchmarked Warhammer, we ran the same battle for each card and variably zoomed in and out of the center of the battle, pivoting and flying along the way. While we know these aren't exact replicas, the two benchmarks for this game, do remember that your own gameplay won't be the same every time either. And besides, 4 frames for an average is a lot to make up for. We did the same thing for City Skylines, by the way. If you're wondering how the two cards hold up in DirectX 12 mode, not to worry, we have two games up and ready for you. The first was Rise of the Tomb Raider. While the game itself isn't known for its fantastic optimization qualities just yet, being as though nothing else was changed between these tests, the results are still fair and indicative of first-hand performance. The 980 Ti won this one handily across the spectrum and brought with it an extra 5 frames when it came to minimums. We expect that newer drivers from Nvidia in the future will optimize the 1070 for better DirectX 12 performance, but for now, the Ti takes the cake. 
As for Hitman, a game originally designed around AMD platforms, things were in a deadlock once more. Average frame rates were almost identical, as were the mins, rather low minimums notably. Again, DirectX 12 should, in theory, correct a few of these frame dips, especially for the 1070, although it should be noted that AMD will always have a bit of an edge here thanks to hardware-driven asynchronous compute capabilities, whereas Nvidia cards, yes, even the 1070, rely on the CPU in a much more dependent way for this execution. We'll see what Nvidia has in store for Pascal to correct this quote-unquote problem. In summary, I'm calling this one a tie, at least for the two cards we tested with. If you plan on purchasing a 1070 with a beefier aftermarket cooler, which might cost a bit more I might add, then sure, the 1070 will win across the board, but not by much, save a few games where the 1070 stepped on the GTX 980 Ti, games like City Skylines and Grand Theft Auto V. The same goes for water cooling in this regard. Even Heaven Benchmark yielded, well, results that appeared to mirror each other. So regardless of which card you choose, your 1080p and 1440p experiences will be roughly the same, but the 1070 of course will consume much less power, cost a bit more or less, in some cases we'll have to follow up with the prices over the next few months, and perhaps most importantly, the 1070 is more future-proof when it comes to both the driver support and available VRAM. Whatever else you take away from this video is on you. If you like what you saw, give this thing a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything in my life, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for this guy right here, the Radon RX 480, which I'll be benchmarking and uploading results for very, very soon, folks. This is Science Studio. I don't want to drop that thing. Thanks for learning with us.